Well, good morning, YouTube friends and family, and welcome to today's edition of The Wellness Homesteader. So today I thought we would broach the very sensitive topic of, am I really a homesteader? So stay tuned. Well, good morning again. And today I wanna to talk about a topic that is really near and dear to my heart, and that is, am I really homesteading? So I've shared with you in the past, when you're a YouTuber, you attract, no matter if you're a small channel or a big channel, um, you do attract people who aren't on your channel or aren't viewing your videos to uplift you, to encourage you, or to enjoy your content. They're really there to challenge, to criticize, um, to tear you down. So I've gotten a lot tougher <laughs> through the seven months that I've been YouTubing here. And I decided it was finally time to answer those naysayers who may or may not still be watching my channel. They're, most of them are muted if they've commented prior. Why do I consider myself a homesteader? So I was like going to a source, you know, my book thing. So Wikipedia, this is what it says homesteading is. It's a lifestyle of self-sufficiency characterized by substance agriculture, home preservation of food, and may also involve small scale production of textiles, clothing, and craft work for home use or sale. So when you think about that, homesteading is really self being self-sufficient with what you have to work with. That definition says nothing about you must have X acres. You must have at least this number of different types of animals. You must grow at least this much food. That's not at all what it says. It says it's a self-sufficiency lifestyle. So there's a spectrum of homesteading. So I believe there are people living in New York in a high rise apartment that are homesteading with the resources that they have. So maybe they're growing their own herbs or producing food on a rooftop garden. Maybe they um, make crafts to sell. Um, they've become more self-sufficient in their lifestyle. They're less consumer driven and more self-sufficiency driven. So have I always been a homesteader? No, I have not. In my working years, I traveled extensively for my job for about the last 25 years. So I, prior to retirement, let me say that, prior to the end of 2019. So I didn't have a lot of time to grow food, maintain a garden, um, and I was consumer driven. Then, as you all know, I had the major health crisis <laughs> with my fourth back surgery, subsequent complications, fractures, and you know just the insistence of my medical team that I must retire and I must stop doing um, things that are harming my body. And you know, prior to COVID, I don't think I ever really thought that my growing food and, and canning, and I had done it on a very, very small scale throughout that time. You know, a few tomato plants, uh, some herbs, but never any formal garden uh, for a number of years. I, if I wanted to can, I generally went to the farmer's market and bought my produce there. And that's fine too, if that's what you're able to do. However, um, I was speaking with my son yesterday and I thought this was very interesting. And I've shared before, my son Ben is 36. So he's, you know, a, an adult, but um, he was quite adamant and quite shocked. He said, you know, I didn't know how much of a thing COVID really was until I went to the store and just saw empty shelves everywhere. And I couldn't buy some of the basic things that we take for granted. And since the start of COVID, I know many of us have changed how we prep or how we're prepared for crises or long-term shortages of certain items like canning jars and canning lids. I always had a, a pretty healthy pantry. However, I have completely changed that. And I actually started that not knowing COVID was going to happen. I started it more because of my health the difficulty when I would 
have a problem with my health in obtaining, sourcing different items. So I have quite a robust pantry now. So I do believe that you can homestead on whatever scale that you're able to do across the spectrum and still call yourself a homesteader. Don't let other people define who you are, what you are, and what you're doing. So across the spectrum, you have everything from folks who are completely off grid. They're not dependent on public utilities, water, sewer. I'm not in that category. You know, would I love to produce my own solar energy? Sure I would. Is it a goal that's financially obtainable for me? No, not at this stage in my life. So I conserve energy. I do use um, oil lamps for lighting, but mostly I conserve. I use a rain barrel to collect water for watering my plants, for watering my garden, so that I'm not as dependent on the grid. But that doesn't mean an off-grid person is a homesteader and an on-grid is not. Other homesteaders like to barter, so their goal is not to spend any money cash like they're not going to hand over that dollar so you know just take me perhaps i would say okay i will give you a month's supply of soap i will make you a canning mat a canning mitt in exchange for x so have i ever bartered certainly um that is part of some homesteading lifestyles. You know, if you have an overabundance of eggs or goat's milk, can you trade with someone for something that they need that you have an overabundance of so that neither one of you have to hand over the green dollars? In the United Kingdom, as I was doing my research, they call homesteading small holding. And I thought that was a really neat term and what the definition is is a small diversified farm so do I have a farm I think I've shared before I'm actually two houses inside the village limit so I am unable today to have chickens goats I'm not sure I want goats but I would love to have chickens uh, I can keep honeybees which I have done off and on for a few years but that's it um, you can't have rabbits, you can't have chickens, you can't have goats. Uh, forget the other item. There is a house bill um, that has been proposed in the state of Ohio that's totally gone bye-bye due to COVID that is striving to allow people to do with on their land as they choose within some certain limits. So it would take away a city or a village or a county's ability to say, we well, can't have chickens because we don't want that. So I continue to follow it. I continue to support the bill. And I do think that perhaps after the wave of COVID has subsided and people start taking stock of the challenges and the shortages they did face, that perhaps this bill could get reintroduced or reinvigorated and that I would have an opportunity to have a little bit more of a farm on my one acre. For me, I'm doing what I can. I do raise a fair amount of food on my property. I try to improve my skills and use my resources to the best of my ability. So if I can grow and harvest my own herbs organically and use them to cook home cooked foods, that's good for my health, it's good for my budget, and, and it's good for the soul, in my opinion. I think it can be a frame of mind. I really strive to be as self-sufficient as I possibly can. Now, I'm not gonna put a new roof on my house and I'm not good at plumbing. I will share that. I can rewire an outlet. There's a lot of skills that I've developed through the years, being um, single and raising a child as a single person um, that, that I really rely on and I enjoy that self-sufficiency. Even though I love clothing and I like to buy clothing, could I make my own clothes? I absolutely have and could. I just choose not to as a general rule. But having that skill of being able to sew, to know how to make useful things for your house, whether it's cleaning products, um, bath and body products, and that's why I'm bringing you a lot of the videos that I bring you. 
on how to make your own fill in the blank because I want to share those self-sufficiency skills that I've developed as a homesteader. I do want to not just be a consumer. I would like to, instead of just consuming pre-made goods, I would like to be able to produce those goods and when I can afford to be a consumer, then be a consumer. You know, I have a lot of books. I've shared a few of them with you. I can leave links in the description box below. I had seen this book, I'll say advertised, but, but highly touted. And it's John's Se John Seymour's Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It, The Complete Back to Basics Guide. And I was so excited. I actually, it does not look used, but I actually found this used. And it's like pristine. Nobody ever cracked this book. This book goes through everything that you can possibly think of. Um, gardening, animals, taking care of your fields, um, foraging in the wild, let's say, um, dairy, cooking, winemaking, brewing, creating energy, craft and skills. So this is really a comprehensive manual where, you know, can I do everything in this book? No, but it's given me some great ideas and it's proven to be a really good reference. The other one that I really like, and this was actually written by um, Ron and Johanna Melchiori. I may be saying their name wrong, but this goes through, um, the, these two um, folks, couple, are off-grid homesteaders, and this goes through just a variety of things going, a lot of it's about going off-grid. There was a time I really decided to do, or wanted to do that and as i said for me my option would be solar and i'm not willing to i would never recoup the money i would spend given the fact of my age so i would like to hear from you uh what do you think a homesteader really is do you think homesteading means you have to have land crops a, a farming business animals or do you believe as I do, that homesteading is more about self-sufficiency. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, please go ahead and smash that like button. And if you're not part of my YouTube family, go ahead and hit that like, or I'm sorry, the subscribe button, you know, the one to the left down below, and then ring the bell to be notified of all new videos. So this is our Wednesday video. I am working ahead finally and i'm going to try to get wednesdays and fridays video up yet today on a monday so um, more content to come thank you for uh, being with me today and as always be healthy be well be blessed and i'll see you all a little later this week take care